Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again. That's for art. I'm going to continue reading uh, our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. Uh, I apologize for the delay in the number of days it's been getting onto this. We're on Chapter 6, finally, which is on page 128. Um, you know, we had the 311 uh, commemoration event. Kevin started the Boast Ignorance Project walk, and I've got corporate filing deadlines, so I have just been up to here with things to do. So let me get right to this, and I'll keep the comments from the peanut gallery for another day so we can get through this. Chapter 6 is titled, Tragedy on the Colorado Plateau. This is in quotes. Atomic energy is the safest industry in the land, unquote, is the theme song from the Atomic Energy Promoters. In fact, that's still their theme song! Fuckers. We are constantly bombarded with twin platitudes. We understand radioactivity hazards better than any other. And no industry has a safety record like the atomic energy industry. Beautiful. Reassuring. But is it true? To understand the atomic energy enterprise and what it means to people, we dare not start in the middle. For by then so much more has been well tidied up, carefully swept, un swept under the rug by a devoted army of public relations educators. Educators is in quotes. No, it is necessary to start at the beginning. And at the beginning of this industry story starts with one substance. You ready? Uranium. Without uranium, there is no atomic energy enterprise. Uranium must be won from the earth by old-fashioned mining, carried out whatever sufficient rich carried out whatever sufficient rich deposits are found. Once one understands the uranium mining story, one realizes that conditions are not really much different from the rugged pioneer days of the yellow metal and the value of a human life and the value of a human life not appreciably greater. Rich uranium deposits occur in several places of the world. <clears throat> the Congo, formerly ruled by Belgium, one of the most significant areas of rich deposits. <clears throat> in the United States, the Colorado Plateau provides a reasonable abundant supply of uranium ores. Since nuclear bombs are today's military sine qua non, it is understandable that the U.S. government would be loath to depend on extra continental supplies of this critical element for the nuclear era. So uranium mining had to be developed on the Colorado Plateau. A cheap supply of uranium is the name of the game, especially when, as we shall see later, a determined effort is in progress to make uranium-based nuclear electricity appear economically attractive. Cheap uranium starts with a lack of concern for the fate of men who are mining uranium ore. Uranium miners on the Colorado Plateau have been dying of lung cancer in what can be best described as an epidemic of this dread disease. <clears throat> is the reason known? Yes, they have had their respiratory tracts and lungs exposed to a powerful cancer-producing stimulus, the alpha particle radiation coming from the radon daughters. What are radon daughters? Uranium, as it occurs in natural deposits, decays slowly through steps to radium. Radium, in turn, to radon. And radon, which disappears quickly, about half of it disappears in three days, gives rise to a sequence of radioactive byproducts collectively known as radon daughters. While the long persistent radium is present, there will be radon and radon daughters. That's weird to say. There will be radon and radon daughters. <laughs> Sorry guys, I can't say that. Radon daughters. Thus, Anywhere uranium is mined, radon daughter exposure is an expected hazard. 
The degree of hazard depends on how well the mine is ventilated to sweep out radon, a gaseous element. For without radon, there are no radon daughters, and hence, no hazard. Wagoneer, this is in a star, and it tells us down here at the bottom. Joseph K. Wagoneer is a statistician, epidemiology, epidemiology branch of the National Cancer Institute. <clears throat> Wagoneer and his colleagues of Occupational Health Program of the U.S. Public Health Service has established beyond a shadow of medical doubt that the epidemic occurrence of lung cancer in uranium miners in the Colorado Plateau is undoubtedly due to exposure to radon daughters. And thus the uranium miners, possibly an ultimate 500 or more of them, represent a major group of casualties of that safest of all industries, the atomic energy industry, via fatal lung cancer. And this is the only beginning of the story, as we shall see presently. One might feel sad that such an unexpected result of the development of atomic energy has occurred, that it is unfortunate and say, how was anyone to know that this would happen? But the truth of the matter is quite otherwise. From knowledge available to everyone concerned, it was from the start of the rush to mine uranium in the 1940s known that the exposure to radon daughters would be, would be occurrences of lung cancer among the exposed miners. There would be occurrences of lung cancer among the exposed miners. <coughs> I'm sorry, let me read that again for you. <coughs> and don't mind me if I clear my throat. From knowledge available to everyone concerned, it was from the start of the rush to mine uranium in the 1940s, known that with the exposure to radon daughters, there would be occurrences of lung cancer among the exposed miners. There was no need to discover this medical fact on the Colorado Plateau after 1940, for medical tests recorded this result. Lung cancer from uranium miner had occurred decades before in uranium mines in Schneeberg, Germany, and Jochamistal, Czechoslovakia. And for decades, every medical authority realized that radon and its radon daughters represented the culprit. But we had to repeat the unnecessary tragedy of miner's lung cancer on the Colorado Plateau and we are likely to continue to do so unless stringent steps are taken to avoid it. Ha! Ha! There's a commonly agreed measure of exposure to radon daughters called, quote, the working level, unquote, of radon and radon daughters. It specifies a certain concentration of the alpha-emitting nuclear radon, nuclear, I'm sorry, it specifies a certain concentration of the alpha-emitting radionuclides per volume of air. The numerical value of this unit need not concern us here, except to state that minor exposure can be described in terms of the, quote, working level, unquote, in his mining environment, and the number of months he has been working at such levels of radon daughter exposures. One simply multiplies the working level times the number of months, eight hours a day, five days a week, to get what is called the working level months, or WLM, units of exposure. Don't you love those little acronyms or signature things? Individual mines have operated under conditions differing widely from each other in the working levels of radon and radon daughters present. And thus, some miners, in a few years of employment, accumulated a large dose in working level units, and others much less. Subtitle. Lung cancer epidemic could have been prevented. Hmm. The Wagner Report appeared in 1965, indicating radon daughter exposure as the cause of observed epidemic of lung cancer among the miners. A ripple of dismay spread through the atomic energy community, and that dismay grew to a roar as it became widely known that such an epidemic 
could have been fully anticipated based upon the knowledge long available. As is usual in such manners, the first task is passing the buck. For who among government officials or agencies will accept the blame for a rash of fatalities resulting from benign neglect by someone? The Atomic Energy Commission maintained that uranium mining per se and the conditions therein were not within its province of authority. Others disagreed. But the whole episode became too difficult to sweep under the rug. Thus, the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy decided that a full set of open hearings on this tragedy must be held in order to understand what happened, why it happened, and how it might be avoided in the future, or as we call it now, covered up. <laughs> For those miners dead of lung cancer, no ameliorative measures are available. For hundreds of miners who have already been exposed to the cancer-producing alpha rays, there is also no ameliorative measure. They only need to wait several years to develop lung cancer. Nothing will save them from their fate. The set of hearings held by the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy are entitled Radiation Exposure of Uranium Miners In two volumes, they represent a remarkable account, evidence of how utterly irresponsible humans can behave where the health and welfare of humans impinges upon the economic health of industrial enterprise. What has happened since those hearings is even less comprehensible or defensible. Those hearings contain the most interesting document called Guidance for the Control of Radiation Hazards and Radiation Mining, issued as a special report number eight of the Federal Radiation Council. We shall return to this later. The hearings also contain testimony presented by one witness after another relating to the expectation that lung cancer must occur with radon daughter exposure and suggesting that the way to prevent a new unnecessary deaths would be to ventilate the uranium mines in order to achieve a drastic reduction in radon concentration in mine air, enhance a drastic reduction in lung exposure to radon daughters. One wonders why it took two volumes of hearings to arrive at such an obvious conclusion until one realizes that dollars are involved. Cleansing the air of uranium mines costs money, and if money is spent to save human lives, the profit, profits from uranium mining is lessened. But there are even deeper issues at stake, like you mean the queen owns most of the uranium on the planet? Uranium is the requisite element as fuel for nuclear reactors, and rea nuclear reactors are being touted as the future salvation with respect to meeting the needs, the electric power needs of the nation. Nuclear reactors depended in large measure for acceptance upon the demonstration that economically they would compete favorably with coal, oil, or gas, the major fossil fuels used to produce steam to drive electrical generators. Obviously, the more costly uranium fuel, the less attractive nuclear power would appear compared with fossil fuel power and this to atomic promote atomic and this to atomic energy promoters such as the AEC and Joint Committee on Atomic Energy would indeed represent a tragedy for them and once one understands this primary fact it becomes ever so much easier to understand why two volumes of hearings are required the really pertinent evidence could have pre been presented in one-third of, vo of Volume 1. The gobbledygook of obscuring the issues occupied the remaining one and two-thirds volumes. Subtitle, Obscuritanism Replaces a Simple Solution. Hmm. Wow. This is intentional. That fucking intentional. Simple problems with obvious answers ought by reasonable men to be solved with dispatch. 
radon daughters represent a known cancer producing poison. The miners were being exposed to this poison. The miners were dying of an epidemic occurrence of lung cancer. The answer? Clean up the air of the uranium mines and then the miners won't die of lung cancer. <clears throat> Very elementary. But why seek elementary solutions when by jargon and ridiculous rhetoric more complicated solutions can be made available? And true to ex expectations in so many aspects of atomic energy development, the jargon and confusing obscuritanism prevailed long enough to fill two volumes of hearing in the August halls of the Joint Committee on Atomic Energy. The relative testimony was short and to the point, only it appears no one was listening to that. Just like now. These people ought to go to jail. Like, seriously, these people ought to fucking go to jail. <clears throat> Thus, Chairman Holyfield, who ought to be in jail, motherfucker, I hope he's dead and in hell right now. Thus, Chairman Holyfield explored in great detail how one might be sure of precisely the radiation dose received by a particular miner. After all, he reasoned, knowing what's in the air, the man breathes is only indirect evidence of what was really the exposure at the lung surface to alpha rays. What a motherfucker. This really pisses me off. And then he wondered at those hearings, how accurately was the concentration of radon in the air in each mine known? How could we be sure a particular man's cancer was really due to radon exposure if we didn't know his exact dose of radiation to the lungs? Technically, every question is correct. From a public health protection viewpoint, they represent trivial, irrelevant, nitpicking in the extreme. Oh man, I hope that guy's dead. What was abundantly clear to everyone was that lung cancer was indeed occurring in relation to radon daughter exposure. You know what? I should stop. I'm sitting here looking at the clock. It's 17 minutes. So I'm going to stop here. We're on page 133 at the second paragraph right there. And I'll pick this up tomorrow. This is, can you tell? I'm kind of getting a little pissed off about this. I am just completely dumbfounded. I, I honestly, honest to God, you guys, these people knew they were setting a whole train of poison up on the entire world for money. Like, really, did they really think they'd have enough money that they could <clears throat> protect their own families or they weren't even thinking about their families? Well, I'm going to stop. I need to get back to work, but I didn't want to go one more day without giving you guys a chapter. And uh, it seems that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, it seems that we re I read better when I read every day. So I apologize. My reading wasn't very good today. Hopefully I'll be better tomorrow. And um, ciao, you guys, and take care. Put your courage feet on. We need it. <laughs>